All right, time for some shop talk with our entertainment attorney, James Walker, a regular contributor here to the Stan Simpson Show. Always good to see you. Let's just do a sort of a mixed variety of things here. Uh, Katie Stevens from yeah. Connecticut, American Island, gets the, what, gets the axe, but is on Letterman and DeGeneres. And she's what's put, the future for this young lady? Well, she's put Connecticut on the map. And I think we all knew when she auditioned After several months ago that she had the goods. The trick Does she have her. the goods? you think she has the goods? I think she has the goods, Stan. I, um, I'm amazed that... She can sing songs like At Last by Etta James, and she can sing pop stuff by Carrie Underwood. She has range, huh? She has range. The trick is going to be, will she go get a good team behind her? Because after the American Idol tour is over, many of these kids disappear, and we never hear from them again. So right now, why she has 23 or 25 million of viewers, if not 30, watching the show and coming out for the tour, the key is to put a good team around her, slim her up, Make her look the part, dress the part, and walk the part, and find good music. Mm. Find key good music. So get something out there right now. Maximize on her popularity. You figure the tour is going to run six to nine months before they go into another year in American Idol number 10. So the trick is have your record ready by the time this tour is over and you come down and all of that American Idol fanfare is over and you want to break out individually. The trick is to have a good record and a good album done. Heady stuff for a teenager. The concern about having her keep her head and keep her ego while all this is going on. Now you have peers. Some will be very supportive. There'll be some haters out there. We, we know that. What advice as an entertainment attorney would you tell her about keeping her head and making sure she stays? Uh... It's funny because she's missing her prom to be on this American Idol tour. And there's been a lot of scuttlebutt over whether or not she should go to her high school prom. I would love to see her to do that because I think you do need that balance. I think now you're in Hollywood. You're doing American Idol. But I do agree that I think you need to do some of the regular things that kids do at 16, 17 years old, as she is. Conan O'Brien, let's just change gears. Sure. Go from 17 years old to Conan O'Brien, established star. He ends up with TNT, it looks like, right? TBS. 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 TBS, TBS. Yeah. 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 So talk about that. There was a lot of speculation that Fox well, would they, take him. We all thought Fox was going to give him a 40 to $50 million deal to come over to Fox Network and do a hot show. Chump change. Chump change, right, <laughs> Hollywood talk. However, he ended up with TBS. And uh, I think it's a great deal. I think when you look at their demographic, Stan, and I studied this earlier, they're between the 18 to 49-year-old demographic, if not even younger. It's kind of an MTV demographic versus a, a David Letterman or Jay Leno, which is an older generation, you know, an older <laughs> demographic. They have a younger generation. And I think a guy like Conan could piggyback off of The Office, The Family Guy, those shows that mm -hmm. work on that network can roll right into his audience. And remember, they have Tyler Perry in that TBS TNT family with House of Pain, Meet the Browns, and there's another show coming out by Ice Cube on this. So it's a very young, hip demographic, and I, I think it's a good move for him. I, my advice, though, I, I hope he owns the production. Mm -hmm. I hope he owns some of the actual Why? equity ownership. Because I think that's, tri that's, uh, that's very, very um, serious and very, very critical. When you look at David Letterman, he has worldwide pants. Mm -hmm. When you look at Oprah, of course, she has Harpo. Right. So my hope is that Conan this time is smart enough to own the entire juggernaut. So if the show takes off and becomes a big, big success, if Oprah gets canceled on Channel 3 or Channel 7, she can take the show and put it on Channel 8 or Channel 61. Right. So why not go that route from Jump? Why not? Why go with the TNT? Or you know, why not just say, you know, I'm going to self-syndicate like Arsenio did for a while there. Exactly. And take more, more risk, but more money. Is that, well, I think the question is leverage. Getting kind of axed by NBC, does he have the leverage now to do that? Right. So right now he's got to work his way back up and prove he can put two, three, four million viewers in front of a tube every night. Premature, right? Premature. Let's talk about a movie out there that's getting a lot of uh, hits right now. It's called Death of a Funeral. A funny flick. You have Chris, Chris Rock, Rock first, Tracy Morgan. Yeah, Chris first Rock. I, I say it's his first real film that has been successful. I think he finally has made a film that we all can say, hey, you need to go see Chris Rock's movie. Where in the past, you would say, hey, go to see his stand-up. Right. Now, I think we have sound here. Kristen, we'll play that again. We'll hear the trailer. But there's some of the, some of the audio, at least, or some of the uh, video. What side of the family is here? Mom won't stop crying. This is so hard. Hey, Mama. Oh, my baby! We're going to be late, Fanny. Oh! Uncle Russell, I love you, but you're going to be in the box next. Oh. The coffin just moved. The coffin is moving. There's somebody struggling to get out. All right, Danny Glover and 
Bart and Lars, a lot of stars it. there. Right? I took my son to see it, and I was a little nervous because Chris, Chris Rock's movies typically have been kind of shaky. Mm-hmm. But my son and I laughed from beginning to end. Yeah. From I mean, from the closing credit, we were still laughing. It was just that funny. A lot of entertainers out there. A lot right? of entertainers. A great ensemble cast. Yeah. And Chris Rock doesn't have to carry a movie. You know, they say he's the uh, successor to Eddie Murphy, mm-hmm. but he can't carry a movie like Eddie Murphy could. You know, Martin so, Lawrence is pretty well with his flicks, too. He's not a box office big, but he does well with his movies, right, for the most he, part? He does very well with his movies, but this movie, I think what was great about it is it's a remake of a British film, Mm -hmm. I think of 1997 I believe, or some years ago and they were able to build an ensemble cast that worked and it's a diverse cast, black mm-hmm. and white, and everybody delivers. I mean, every scene just keeps you laughing out, out of your pants. All right, it's entertainment potpourri. The segue now to sports. Ben Roethlisberger gets clipped, big time quarterback, two Super Bowl rings, not even thirty yet. Is accused twice now in mm-hmm. a year and eighteen months of some uh, sexual assault type activity with you know, young women. Uh, NFL is saying we're not tolerating six game suspension. Hasn't been charged, hasn't been convicted. Your thoughts on that? Five years ago, he would have gotten two games. I think this year he's getting six in the wake of Tiger, in the wake of, obviously, John Edwards. There's, Michael Vick. There's Michael Vick. There's, there's a backlash out here right now that these boys who've broken the rules or gotten away with, I don't want to say the law, but broken the policy rules of the NFL in terms of your conduct. Remember, it's not the criminal aspect. It's the moral conduct of being a professional player and the leader of arguably one of the greatest football franchises ever. A lot of pressure on the commissioner. Here is a marquee star. Let's be very honest, a white marquee star. A lot of folks right. were saying, let's see how the commissioner will go with this. There was some speculation or some concern that black athletes in trouble get a little more punitive damage. The commissioner had to respond here. I applaud the commissioner for responding. I was surprised that he did it during the NFL draft week because it's going to overshadow the draft. I was really surprised that he did that, but I have to... For the young guys coming up, right? I think he had to weigh setting the tone, and and I applaud him, and I just hope Ben Roethlisberger can really, you know, get help for whatever it is that's causing him to find himself in these kind of precarious situations with young ladies. Yeah, for a young man, again, don't forget the motorcycle accident pr- prior to that. He Without had that, a helmet. Yeah, that bad accident. So poor judgment, whether he's guilty or not in anything here. Poor judgment. Poor judgment, and I think the Steelers have already moved to get a backup quarterback in, so you got to wonder if they see where this may shake out. 15 seconds. Sure. Segwaying. Dorothy Height. Oh. Great civil rights icon. Yes. Um, your thoughts on her legacy? Well, I mean, Dorothy Height dies at 98 years old yeah. after marching with Dr. King, being at the I Have a Dream speech, running the Negro National Negro Council for Women for 40 years. I mean, what can you say? When you look at your life, you think you've accomplished stuff with a show, radio, TV, print. Mm. But you look at Dorothy Height's career, Miss Dorothy Height's career, and you realize we haven't done a third yeah. or a tenth of what a, she's a, done. A true, a true icon. All right. Thanks to our guest, James Walker, Rebecca Stern, Scott Gray, Rick Hancock. You can send your show comments or requests, or you can watch us again at ctnow.com and friend us on Facebook. Become a fan of the Stan Simpson Show. We're on Twitter, too, so look out for our tweets. Lori Perez and The Real Story are next for the good folks here at Fox 61. I'm Stan Simpson. We'll see you next week.